this episode, we're going to be making this working Radiation King lunchbox. And to do that, we're going to be using Acmer's P2 laser engraver, which is actually their flagship laser engraver right now. And I'm pretty excited about this because Acmer is a brand that is focused on the user-friendly experience of laser engraving. In fact, one of the things that I already love about this, just looking at the outside of the box, there's some, some features that they put on the outside of the box. And when the first one is super simple assembly in one minute. If you've watched all of my other laser engraver builds, uh, it, it, it's torture having to put those things together, calibrate them, do everything. So the idea that that is possible, a one minute uh, setup is amazing. It also has ultra high precision industrial guide rails, ultra high engraving speed at 30,000 millimeters per minute and high laser power output of 10 watts, 20 watts, 33 watts or 48 watts, which is pretty powerful for this type of laser. Acmer actually sent us the 33 watts, so I'm pretty excited about that. But as you can see, this thing is huge on my table. I'm hoping, I, this is, sounds crazy to say that, I'm hoping it's not actually the size of the full size of the box because uh, I'll probably have to take it to a different room to use it. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than my table, which is not a bad thing. So with that, uh, should we open it up? Oh my gosh, Woo! it's not gonna be as easy as that, all right. So opening this up, wow. The first thing we're met with is this vital precautions before use uh, guide, uh, which sounds pretty important. Also the uh, manual is on the other side, version 1.0. I've said it a million times that lasers aren't super, super safe. And so naturally, uh, they give you kind of a safety class in here. They also tell you about all the parts and things that are inside, uh, how the laser works, how to set it up, which is what I'm gonna try and do right now. I think that'll also help me get some of the stuff on my table. Ooh, that's, ooh. Uh, let's take a look at what's underneath this mat. As you can see, look at that. You have this nice, nice packaging, really pretty. Looks like right here, I've got my actual laser module, which I'm gonna go ahead and pull out, Ugh, just like that, nice and heavy. Everything comes in really, really nice packaging. Uh, okay, we got some tubing, and then we got Right here, I have, wow, that is a, wow, that's a really pretty laser. It's really, really sturdy. It's really, like I said, really pretty looking on top of being well designed. I recognize this kickstand feature. This is the materials package, which I always appreciate because it's nice to be able to have some things that you can, without having to go out and, and to buy some materials, just to be able to try out some of the different features on your laser. So it looks like, oh wow, they actually give you a good assortment of some uh, different materials. This is cork, stainless steel, iodized cards, some plexiglass, and then we've got some pieces of wood. Oh, look at that. Usually you have to do this yourself. They sent a pre-done uh, test card. So what this does is it shows you at what settings I would need to get different levels of etching or effect. Um, also where I might start to have problems if I go overboard. I don't think anyone sent anything like this with one of my printers before, so that's pretty cool. Oh, here's some different tools that I'm probably gonna be needing here in a few minutes. And then it has a really nice case for a pair of protective glasses, which should be rated for this laser. Up here, I've got my blower, it looks like, right here. I think it's really, really important that those blowers are, are included. Um, a lot of laser companies don't include the blower. And sure enough, it looks to me like this laser comes pre-built. I mean, yeah, it's just already in there, just as as it is. 
which makes it one of the best or most popular, at least for me, laser engravers, because I hate the part where you have to do assembly. Um, laser engravers are not easy to assemble. It might seem like they are, but there's usually a lot of tightening and calibration. They can just small things can throw it off. Oh, and this is just good to go. And uh, hopefully it fits on my table. Oh, it does just barely. Look at that. Perfect fit. All right. The installation steps do look pretty simple. I mean, basically I'm just putting my laser, uh, connecting it to the actual laser engraver and then uh, connecting it by its power cords. And that's about it. Look how simple this is. I don't know that I need so many tools. Look how many tools I have. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Uh, at any rate, so next what we need to do is set up my computer so we can start cutting. Acmer has a proprietary app for controlling the cutter. They also give full instructions on how to set it up to use it for the two most popular cutting programs, Laser Gerbil and Lightburn. There are some files that you have to install in order for these to work, and they're supposed to be included on the SD card that it came with, but mine was inaccessible for some reason. But luckily, Acmer has everything you need on their site, including instructional videos, so no worries. They actually give really good instructions and advice related to these programs. While Laser Gerbil is free and great for setting up files for being able to cut, I prefer Lightburn for this project. It does cost to buy the full features, but I think that they're worth it, particularly for the way that it sets up layers, which I'm going to need to use for this project to etch in 3D. Which brings me to our project. I've had a plan for a while to combine two Fallout objects, a lunchbox and a Radiation King radio. Not just a lunchbox that looks like a Radiation King radio, but one that works like the real thing. I was lucky enough to visit our friend Zap Wizard and got to see his amazing working Radiation King radio. If you haven't yet, you should check it out. Mine's gonna be a little more simple and cheap, but should still be fun. I got these wooden boxes at Hobby Lobby and because they're less than $5, I got several of them for this project. Now I decided to etch this in 3D so it doesn't just have the picture on there, it would actually have some form to it. Uh, it would actually stick out. So the question is, how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is set up our 3D cut files. And for that, I'm gonna use Tinkercad. It's free, it's easy to use, you can use it on any device, and it's all stored online. Next, I'm gonna export my file as an STL. Once I have my 3D STL file on my computer, I'll upload it to STL to PNG. I'll set the resolution to 3200 and the depth offset to 50%. I choose my file to import, and once when it creates it, I save it to my computer. Next, I'll take it into Photoshop, where I added the Radiation King logo. The way Lightburn cuts is not at all in the white areas, and deepest in the dark area. Now, because I plan to have several passes to cut deeper and deeper, I'm creating three images. One that engraves the general design, one that cuts less of the higher areas, and one that cuts only the lowest areas. I also created a design for the front of the lunchbox. With my PNG files ready, it was time to take them into Lightburn. With Acmer P2 laser selected, I imported each of my PNGs in the order that they're gonna cut. I also set the size of each to about 7.7 .7 wide and 5.25 high. Now if it was available, we'd use 3D Slice. Instead, because it's a dialed laser, I'm gonna set that image mode to grayscale for each of those images. So that will tell it how to etch out my design. But I also wanna have it cut out the window for the radio. So for that, we need a line cut. You can try and draw one, but it's a bit sloppy and hard. Instead, I'm gonna select this layer. I'll right click on the image and select trace image. I select okay. And now I have an outline of the entire image, but I just want the window. So I'm gonna right click on the shape and click ungroup. And now I can select and delete whatever I don't want. So now I just have the window. You'll also notice that now that layer is aligned for cutting. You can also set each layer for the number of passes that you wanna cut. And that's where some experimentation will come in. I do have my reference sheet. I also decided for safety purposes and to avoid my house smelling like burnt wood, I cut it in my garage. The laser does have a fire sensor and a tilt sensor that shut it off and sent an alarm in the case of danger. I was set up, ready to roll, and then I had a problem. When I tried to frame things out or cut, it just went back and forth, uh, not, not up and down. 
and I couldn't figure out why. I even contacted support. Eventually, I noticed these arrows and pieces of plastic that were screwed into the body. Turns out that this is to prevent it from getting harmed during the shipping, but I didn't notice it in the instructions, so I hadn't removed them. I do need the tools to take those off. The next thing I know, it was working fine. And I gotta say, this thing cuts hot and fast. Because of the height of the laser, I broke down the box into smaller parts and tried cutting it that way. But the problem was that while the boxes were perfectly square as a whole, the parts were not. And so one side would be higher than the other and that meant that the cut would come out kind of looking skewed and, and off. I decided I needed to cut the box as a whole, but that meant that the laser needed to be higher and I didn't have Akmar's leg extensions, which you can get on their website. So I got creative and used some of these other boxes to raise it. The problem was I forgot to reset that laser height using the kickstand. So the laser was too high and ended out getting this burn, uh, which is because it was just too far away. Those two boxes are very ruined. So I adjusted the height and realized my next problem. If I cut the window, while it's still one piece, it's also gonna cut the bottom. So I used a cardboard box inside to prevent that. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. Uh, as you can see, it, it could be a little bit of a fire hazard. But it did work and I got a great image. It's hard to see, but this is 3D. Like each of these little vents is slowly raised. They're kind of rounded on the tops and then kind of sharp on the bottoms. Uh, this part right here is really deep, for example. Uh, it looks really nice. I really like it. Uh, even the Radiation King logo kind of sticks out. And the front came out really nice as well. Next, I was ready to dress it up a bit. So I sanded down some of the edges to make it a little more rounded at the edges, but also a little rounded at the top. Next, I used this gel stain. What I like about this is that it very evenly stains any wood and seals it really nicely. I want to make this plate right here look more metallic like the real one. So I masked it off and sprayed it with this paint. This is where you can kind of get inventive using a lot of different methods. I bought these feet to put on the bottom and it's looking pretty good, but it doesn't do anything yet. I found this radio a while ago on Timu during our Timu deep dive video. I'll also put a link to the Amazon version below. It has a radio does Bluetooth, Bluetooth mode, and even takes an SD card for MB3s. Aux input motor. I took it apart to use for my internal working parts, and then I made this enclosure to attach it to the body. The screen's based on an old Zenith radio, but I borrowed Zap's design from his RPF. I also used a little plastic for the screen and the window, and an old clock needle for the dial. But the radio dial is in the center and not where I need the knobs. I found these radio knobs at Ace Hardware and sprayed them a color that I needed. Then I connected them to a bolt, sewing bobbin, and tightened those on using a hex nut and nylon washer. I got this variety of rubber bands, picked one of the right size and wrapped it around the dial and out to the knobs. I used some of this rib tubing to extend the switches which fit perfectly to the front. I made three fake switches and then I put rubber covers on the other side. And voila, a working Radiation King lunchbox. So now when I turn this switch, it turns it on. I can change the station using this knob. And when I use this knob, it also changes the station. When I turn the switch again, it connects to my phone where I can use James's PipDroid app to play all my favorite Fallout stations. Green dog. Or I can turn the knob again to play all the stations I downloaded from my SD card. Till we meet again, this is John Henry Eden signing off. So what do you think? Is this something you would make? Is there something else you think we should try making with this laser? We want to thank Akmer for giving us this laser for the project. Check out their links in the description below. And stay tuned as we make more cool things. Like, subscribe, comment below. This has been your Geek Fix.